Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in this tutorial I would be continuing my discussion about particle image velocimetry and in short PIV. So if you haven't seen my first video I'll just walk you through it. So in my first video I talked about the theoretical background of PIV and in which I told you that we have a flow happening and we try to visualize the flow because PIV is a flow visualization technique. So at first we put some particles in the flow and we call them as the seeding particles and they allow us to see the flow. And the way in which we can see the flow through these particles is that we have a laser with us and we trigger the laser and the laser allows us to see the particles or the laser illuminate the particles and we use a camera to take the pictures and we capture the instances of those particles at two successive times and by correlating those two images we can have some estimate of the velocity using the simple formula that is delta x over delta t. So this was about the theoretical part and in this uh, video I would like to show you what a real PIV setup looks like and it's very similar to this but uh, as an experimentalist, I think uh, we should know uh, about the setup and how it's set up because uh, in theory the things look very simpler but in reality there could be some tricks. So in this tutorial I'll just be showing you the experimental setup that we have in our lab. So in, in my lab we have a setup something that looks like this. So this is a water channel and uh, we just have a continuous water channel and the flow comes in from the left over here and it goes over the geometry here and we have the flow going to the right and it's continuously fed up using a pump. And on the, on the bottom side you can see there, there is a black curtain. So inside this black curtain or the dark room we have the lasers here because lasers are lasers could be hazardous so we want to make sure that uh, we, we strictly want to make sure that uh, most of the light that's been coming out from the lasers i mean they only remain in the flow domain and we want to restrict the light as much as possible so the lasers are at the bottom they are firing towards the top so this particular bottom area or the bottom wall it's transparent so the laser could go through it and we have some particles pre-mixed with the water domain. So the water domain has some particles and with the naked eyes you cannot really see those particles because the size of the particles it's really small. So the particles that we were using it's it's glass spheres. I think I talked about that in my previous video that uh, we can use glass spheres in the liquids and we can use smoke as a seeding particle for air flows. So as you can see that the particle diameter, it's 10 micron, which is really small. It's around the order of human hair, so you can have some estimate. And finally, using these lasers, we eliminate the flow and a camera is mounted over this side, which, is, which isn't really here right now. So we, we take the photos using the camera. So in, in my case, when we were doing the experiment, we just make a video through that camera. It's, it was a DSLR camera and uh, it was operating at a frequency of 50 hertz. So to give you a closure overview, so this was the uh, body that we were studying. It's an airfoil. So you can see the cross section of the airfoil. It's a symmetrical airfoil. So the black one that's spanning all across uh, yeah, in, in this image you can see a better version. So this is the cross section and this is the span wise length of the airfoil. And this particular meter over here is to change the angle of attack. So we were trying to study the different flow patterns that could arise for different angle of attack. So in this photo you can see that the angle of attack is lower than the one that's in this image. So we can adjust the angle of attack and then we can have the flow. And then we can record the flow and finally after we record the flow and we take the images we can study those images to find the final flow pattern so to go into that i'd like to show you with a video in which uh, you can have some idea of what that actually looks like so as i told you that in in the original setup we had the flow from the left to right but when we were doing the experiment we uh, rotated the camera 90 degree 
so in the video the flow is actually from left instead from left to right it's top to bottom so it's more or less the same thing it's only about uh, the orientation of the camera so please don't be confused about it so this is the flow pattern that i was getting with time so it's just six seconds but is it has about 300 frames because the camera's frequency is uh, 50 hertz so if i play it from the beginning you can see that the flow is coming in we, we're getting some vortices over here that that could be because of the presence of the airfoil in the flow and uh, we, we get this video and then we separate this video into multiple images and then our objective is to study those images and try to figure out the velocity field and using that velocity field we can do a lot more so to give you a further idea about how we study images so these are uh, just the typical two consecutive images i must focus on the word consecutive because we don't want to take two images that are very much far apart in time otherwise the correlation technique that is applied after uh, getting these images is much less efficient so we want to make sure that we are working with two successive images so this is how the first image would look like so what i've done is i've just uh, fragmented my video in a uh, number of parts that i want and i'm just capturing it frame by frame so this is like the first frame and this is like the second frame so you can observe of course that the the particles over here they are going from the top to the bottom as they were going in the video and using these two successive images i can capture or i can try to capture the uh the displacement of every particle or a group of particle and then using the delta t which i know from the camera i can estimate the velocity so since the flow is primarily in the x direction so or in this case uh, it's from top to bottom as i must say so there's this uh, the predominant component of the velocity is uh, in this case it looks like it's a v component and because uh, otherwise the flow could be in any direction so depending on the two images we can then study these two images to get the velocity field and i'd be doing this particular part in the next uh, next tutorials because i think that uh, to understand these images we need to have some theoretical understanding of the concept of cross correlation once so once we're done with the understanding of cross correlation then we can use cross correlation to understand how the images will give us the velocity field and if you guys have i, I think I, i've tried my best to explain what's happening with piv but if you got any questions about the experimental setup or if you got any problem about the fundamental of piv please don't hesitate to comment in here i try my best to give you the best answer and thank you so much for watching this video